Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis one more time, continuing our playlist about bleeding and coagulation disorders. So, we have talked about antiplatelets before. Okay, and we have talked about the fibrinolytics before. Cool. Antiplatelets include aspirin and the P2Y12 receptor inhibitor, such as clopidogrel, the GP. 2B3A inhibitors such as the apsiximab and the phosphodiesterase inhibitors such as dipyridamol and zilostazole. Got it? Okay. Then we talked about TPA, drugs as streptokinase, alteplase. Let's say aspirin here. What's the antidote of aspirin? There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. Anyone who tells you otherwise is what's known as like a liar until the moment of the recording of this video. TPA, however, is there an antidote to TPA? And the answer is yes, called antifibrinolytic therapy, such as the famous tranexamic acid. And in the next video, we'll talk about amino caproic acid. What was the goal of TPA? To destroy the clot. What is the goal of tranexamic acid and amino caproic acid? To stop the stupid TPA from destroying the clot that took us a long time to build. Okay, so they prevent the TPA from causing thrombosis. In other words, they preserve the clot. And this is the topic of today's video and let's get started. As you know, hemostasis is the process of preventing blood loss by forming a clot, and it has many steps, vasoconstriction, platelet plug, and coagulation, then fibrinolysis. So aspirin works on preventing the step. TPA works on destroying that clot, leading to fibrinolysis. Antifibrinolytic therapy, which is the topic of today's video, will save and preserve and maintain the clot and prevent the fibrinolysis. Here's the whole story. You injure yourself, vasoconstriction, play the plug, which is primary hemostasis, then secondary hemostasis, which is the coagulation cascade. The fibrin meshwork forms, traps the red blood cell, clot contracts. TPA do does what? TPA does fibrinolysis. But with the medication of today's video, TPA is history. Fibrinolysis is not gonna happen. We are going to preserve this fibrin meshwork. In other words, if your doctor is, is stupid and gave you lots of TPA for no reason and he realized he made a bad mistake, he can give you tranexamic acid or amino caproic acid to reserve this mistake and preserve the fibrin meshwork, lest you should bleed to death. Let's talk about fibrinolysis. So what's the enzyme? It's called plasmin. Plasmin comes from what? From plasminogen. What does plasmin do? Degrades the fibrinogen and the fibrin. Degrades fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. Degrades fibrin into fibrin degradation products. Degrades the stabilized fibrin into D dimer. And we have talked about all of this before in previous videos. Plasmin is crazy, don't leave it alone. Put it in an inactive precursor form called plasminogen, and you need TPA to convert the plasminogen into the active plasmin, plasmin will destroy the clot. So TPA activates plasminogen into plasmin to destroy the clot. Antifibrinolytic therapy will preserve the plasminogen, they will prevent the formation of plasmin, therefore they will maintain the clot. Fibrinolysis, plasminogen into plasmin, destroys fibrin into degradation products and fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products and stabilize fibrin into d dimer with the antifibrinolytic therapy, plasmin is history, we will keep plasminogen inactive, therefore we're not gonna degrade the fibrinogen, we're not gonna degrade the fibrin, we're not gonna degrade the stabilized fibrin, and therefore we're gonna preserve the, the clot. Thank you so much, tranexamic acid and amino caproic acid. So plasminogen, plasmin destroys the clot or dissolves the fibrin dissolve the fiber into fibrin degradation products and dissolve the stabilized fibrin into D-dimer. 
Okay, let's prevent fibrinolysis. You can prevent it at this moment by plasminogen activator inhibitors. They are already in your body. Or you can give therapy drugs from the outside because you are stupid and you gave too much TPA or you gave TPA for no reason. So we use antifibrinolytic therapy called aminocaproic acid or tranexamic acid to prevent the conversion of plasminogen into plasma to prevent the dissolution of fibrin into fibrin degradation products. Cool. How about TPA? TPA is the exact opposite. TPA causes fibrinolysis. So TPA is the exact opposite of anti-TPA, which makes perfect sense. And in previous videos, I've told you if you want to prevent or inhibit plasmin, there is the alpha-2 anti-plasmin. If you want to prevent this step, it's called thrombin-activatable fibrinolysis inhibitors. And this is activated by, guess who? Thrombin. So thrombin is acting in its self-interest because thrombin is the one that formed the clot. If you decided to tamper with it, he's gonna prevent you. For the last time, plasminogen into plasmin. Who stimulates this process? TPA, urokinase, etc. Who inhibits this process? Plasminogen activator inhibitor from the inside, antifibrin oletic therapy from the outside, such as aminocaproic acid and tranexamic acid. Many authors argue that tranexamic acid is more potent than the aminocaproic acid. So this slide is the foundation to what's coming next. Antifibrinolytic therapies are anti-TPA. They include aminocaproic acid, tranexamic acid. They prevent fibrinolysis. Yep, they are anti-TPA. Therefore, they prevent the conversion of plasminogen to plasma. Not, therefore, it's like this is how they do it. Therefore, they preserve the fibrin meshwork and reduce the bleeding. Makes perfect sense. It follows logically. Tranexamic acid available oral or IV antifibrinolytic therapy inhibits the conversion of plasminogen into plasmin. In other words, it inhibits the activation of plasminogen into plasmin. In other words, it inhibits fibrin elysis. That's why we call it antifibrinolytic therapy. Duh. Why do you use it? To prevent excessive bleeding because it preserves the clot. Okay, so what are the indications? Bleeding. So major trauma surgery. Postpartum hemorrhage, heavy menses, especially in von Willebrand disease or von Willebrand disease to be accurate. Dental procedures and nosebleeds. So tranexamic acid is loved by the surgeon, by the OBGYN, by the dentist, by the ENT guy or gal. Side effects. If you are going to prevent bleeding, you're gonna cause clotting. Sorry, actions have consequences. In life, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. So blood clots, big time, allergy and some vision changes. Tranexamic acid is handled by the kidney. Don't forget this. If you are a sophisticated student, all right. Tranexamic acid prevents the conversion of plasminogen into plasmin. How? Competitive inhibition. All right. If you have a patient who has hemophilia and there is a risk of bleeding during a dental procedure, which could be tooth extraction or even dental surgery, you can give tranexamic acid or aminocaproic acid. Never, ever, ever give antifibrinolytics to control hematuria. This is called stupid because they can cause clots. And the lumen of your ureter, for example, is narrow. If you form clots in the ureter, you're a horrible doctor. Oh, but I had some good intentions. I wanted to cure the hematuria. Not with antifibrinolytics, okay? Okay. Severe cases of DIC with confirmed hyperfibrinolysis, you can give antifibrinolytics. Beware, these antifibrinolytics may increase the risk of thrombosis, as you know. If this happens, give heparin. Antifibrinolytics can be used in von Willebrand disease adjunctively. It's not the main therapy, but it helps for mucosal bleeding or procedures. Since tranexamic acid is handled by the kidney, it's contraindicated in patients with severe renal impairment. And I had a video about the five stages of chronic kidney disease and a mnemonic about how to remember them and how to remember the GFR number for each. It's available on my channel. What are other contraindications? Allergy, of course. Active thromboembolic disease, because these guys will lead to clots history of thromboembolism for the same freaking reason, and history of seizures. So here is everything you need to know about tranexamic acid in brief. 
not boxers. If you love medical mnemonics, you will love this website called Pickmonic. Check the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. You can support the channel by Patreon and you'll send you my notes. Thank you. Until next time.